Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Lori Rubin. I'm with Viewbug and I have my friend Mike Motes with us today. Hi Mike, how you doing? I'm doing great. Excellent. I'm excited to be here today. Great. Well, you know, when I think of macro photography, the first name that pops in my head is Mike. He is the macro guy. So Mike, <laughs> how long have you been doing macro photography and teaching? I started in 2001 and um, wanted to be a landscape photographer, but was doing some macro at the time. And then by about 2004, I just decided to dedicate all my time to macro photography. And so I, I, uh, I've uh, been doing it since what 11 years um, full time with the macro. So, uh, I, you know, I wanted to try to be the best um, out there in macro photography, and I thought if I dedicated all my time to it, then I could hopefully be, you know, in the top range of the macro photographers out there. And so far, it's done pretty well for me. I would say so. Yes, indeed. <laughs> well, we're looking at his website right now. Uh, he's got two. We're going to show you. The first one is MikeMotesBlog.com. And so this is where you can find out more about Mike. Uh, you can check out his bio here. And also, um, if you're interested in looking at his images, he's got some ebooks and online courses. But, you know, your m macro boot camps are just amazing, Mike. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about those? Because I know they sell out all the time. Yeah, they're, they're three day <laughs> programs. Yep. Um, they run on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, Friday evening, uh, Saturday, and Sunday. And uh, it's, it's, covers pretty much everything um, that that's good for the beginner to the intermediate photographer. So it would be all about the equipment and depth of field and techniques and that. Um, and then on Saturday there's two hours of shooting time. So as you see in this one image right here, there's tables and we're doing uh, tabletop photography and we've got all kinds of cool subjects that I bring in for them to shoot. Um, and then we do two hours on Sunday. And then I do also about an hour of uh, pro post-processing uh, tips uh, during the workshop, and uh, everybody has a great time. They um, uh, they all they all walk out happy on Sunday afternoon, and and uh, works out really well. That's great. Yeah, I was at your San Diego workshop uh, a few years back. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. It was fun watching yeah. you uh, interact with the students. So. Yeah, it was nice having you there uh, doing the Nick software thing at the That's time. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so Mike is going to be our judge for tiny landscapes, and so he's going to be showing us a few of his images and what he's looking for in a winning image. So, Mike, this is one of my favorite images of all time <laughs> of yours. I remember yeah. seeing this a few years back. And so why don't you go ahead and show us some of your images and, and uh, give us some tips on how to create a great macro image. Yeah, you know, um, in, in the uh, 10 or so years that I've been doing this um, full time, uh, I, I've never really had much success with my flower photography or my bug photography. It's always been all these images that you'll see down here. Um, this particular image uh, has been my most successful. It's It's been an outdoor photographer magazine, three separate issues. It won highly honored in the Winland Smith Rice International Competition. Um, Hewler Packard bought the rights to this image. They own the rights for all advertising on this image. Um, it's been on television, it's been newspapers, uh, it won runner-up of the year on naturephotographers.net uh, critique site, and it's been a very successful image. And what happens is a lot of times is uh, the, this type of an image is something that we don't generally see. Uh, if you go to any macro sites, you're going to see everybody posting flowers and bugs. And so I've kind of learned that, you know, uh, kind of that thinking outside of the box uh, where I, I go out and I find all kinds of cool stuff to shoot that uh, that is a little different, unique from what everybody else is shooting. And that's kind of what's made my photography stand out. Um, so this is this is some of the things that I'll show you to give you ideas on what you can submit for the contest um, that have been successful for me. Uh, the next image I'm going to show you here is just a little yellow leaf on a green skunk cabbage leaf. And you know this image won Image of the Year on naturevertarvers.net in the flora category out of the thousands of images that got posted there. Uh, the editor of the site picked this as the image of the year. So again, leaves are really uh, have done really well for me. When I was in the art show business for seven years, leaves were my top sellers. Um, people people like it. So um, again, just a, a, another idea for a subject that you could submit to the contest. Here's one of uh, a bristlecone pine tree trunk, and and the amazing lines that you see within this. Uh, uh, this little area of the tree trunk that I shot. Now, this looks like it's a large area. It's only about uh, f maybe about four by six inches, so it's actually very small. Uh, but I did an article for Outdoor Photographer, and the editor picked this as the opening page, the full page on the article, um, because it's so unique. It's so interesting. It's got such a cool design to it. 
Uh, another one that uh, you know, Lori, because yes. this one here was, uh, uh, I think they put it up on Google Plus, one of the images of the week with a bunch of others in it. I think the last time I looked at it was well over you know, a million. It's probably at <laughs> two or three million views by now. Uh, but, uh, you know, shot at a botanical garden in, uh, just north of uh, Cincinnati. And it's it's just a really cool graphic design there. Um, here's another one from, I, I shot out in, uh, uh, actually out by you, Lori, in the San Diego Botanical Garden. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, just a really cool image with the lines and the formations of the uh, design of the uh, agave and then the way the light hits it. So, um, you know, if you got tropical plants where you live, they're good. Um, sand patterns, just patterns in, in the sand. Uh, there's so many good subjects that we can shoot out there that people are kind of passing by again to get to those flowers and bugs all the time. Uh, here's one of a, this is a feather on a beach. Um, just a really cool design the way that is feather, feather is formed. Uh, if you're into seashells, find yourself a nautilus shell. There's a great design in these nautilus shells. Um, lily pads, just simple lily pads floating on a pond. Again, another shot of uh, a tropical uh, palm. And if you like hostas, which I love, uh, find some interesting hosta leaves and photograph them. Uh, and again, back out into the desert type tropical type plants, um, cactus. So these are just some kind of quick ideas that I want to pass out to other people, but um, there's just so much out there in the macro world to shoot um, other than flowers and bugs. And, and I'm not say, saying that you shouldn't shoot those because I shoot them every day too. Uh, I still shoot the flowers and bugs when I, when I come across them. But uh, I want people to expand outside of that area and be creative and find all these interesting things like you've just seen here. And I've got tons of this stuff. When you go to my website, um, if you go into the tropical and desert plants and you go into the leaves, and I've got hundreds and hundreds of images, beautiful images that have great graphic design to them, great lines, great contrast, great colors. Um, and, and that's what I'm looking for. I, I, want, I want something that's unique, something that uh, is artistic, uh, fine art, um, and, and that's that's kind of what I'm hoping to see in this contest. Now, Mike, what about uh, nature versus maybe man-made things? Are, can somebody enter, let's say, a rusty part of a car or other type of man-made products? Yeah. Than nature? yeah, I think that's a good idea to open it up so that we uh, include some of the, the non-nature subjects. And I have a lot of those, too. You know, I, I do... Uh, a lot of uh, non-nature subjects and again you can find those on my website uh, under fun stuff and, and old cars and stuff like that and so yeah there's there's all kinds of cool artistic designs in subjects I mean I shoot things in my house just everyday household items sometimes uh, that can be very artistic uh, and considered fine art so yeah I, I think that uh, it would be a good idea to allow those people that are the non-nature photographers to come in and uh, and also enter those into this contest as well. So Mike, we're looking at your tinylandscapes.com website right now, and mm -hmm. you're gonna be sharing with us five tips. And so as you talk, I'm gonna go through some of your images here so people can get some ideas on creating great macro photography. So. Yeah, I, I like to uh, you know give a few ideas for people and, and things to look for. And one is that's real important is finding character. I always talk about finding character, things that are a little bit different or unusual about subjects. And so I always tell people when you're out shooting to go slowly, take your time, so you study every subject for any in, in, interesting characteristics, uh, whether they be in leaves or tree trunks or um, you know, sand or some of those things I was just showing you uh, earlier. Because um, the character is reflected in an object's distinctive, you know, shapes, the remarkable lines, exceptional contrast, unusual patterns, unique textures, or special light. So those are all things that I look for, uh, you know, in, in of the character of the subject. So uh, finding character in nature is about creating images that set themselves apart from the ordinary, the um, you know, the mundane, that uh, most photographers tend to capture. Uh, number two would be know your environment. You know, one of the benefits of macro photography is that the environment is constantly changing with the different seasons. The life cycle of the plants we shoot is changing on a monthly basis. So I can go back to some of the areas uh, and the parks where I shoot and find new things to shoot on a monthly basis because of the life cycle of those plants is constantly changing. You know, so study and learn all the patterns of the environment 
that you shoot in so you'll know where to be at the right times at the right place and all that during the during the you know those changes that happen um, I always ask people are you creating art or are you just documenting you know um, are, are you taking uh, say if you do flower photography um, does it tend to look documented uh, you know are you are you creating something that just looks like it's out of a textbook or are you creating something that, that's artistic you know in uh, documenting photos it shows the flower and the environment that it grows in with all the clutter um, and and we're looking for something a little more artistic generally of course now that doesn't necessarily apply to what we're doing but those are tips that I like to give out to the people that do some of the flower photography and that but um, you know finding uh, the right camera angles for the least distracting backgrounds and subjects you shoot and just creating a more artistic composition rather than shooting stuff that looks documented um, do you think before you press the shutter um, once you find a subject and set up your tripod and camera to take the shot, do you think to yourself, have I seen the subject composed in this manner before? Uh, and if you have, then don't shoot. You know, We all study all photographers online and, and we've seen thousands of images of subject matter uh, in the macro world and uh, if we've seen stuff composed in certain ways, usually I try to, try to, you know, compose it in my own artistic way rather than copy what we've seen uh, by the other photographers. Um, software uh, for post-processing, you know, it's a big one nowadays because uh, we are in a world of digital where um, a lot of what we do is is um, manipulated in post-processing and I know a lot of my images uh, uh, I use all the different software programs like Nick Software and Topaz and I've got a new one now, Smart Photo Editor that has all kinds of cool options for for um, creating artistic looks with our images. So that's all part of what we do nowadays is uh, you know finding good subjects, composing them really well and and then, then taking them into post-processing and, and uh, adding our special kind of look to it with, uh, with those, those great software programs that we have out there. Um, so that would be my five tips. Um, it's uh, um, it's obviously uh, it comes down to practice. Uh, you, you've got to get out there and spend the hours out there. Um, and I always tell people the uh, the photographers that have the largest portfolio of the best images were the ones that spent the most time out in the field. <laughs> you know, it comes down to uh, if you want to have uh, a lot of great images, then you're going to have to spend a lot of time shooting. So, and and that's that's uh, what I've always uh, tried to do is spend as much time out shooting, and that's why I've been successful in, in getting a lot of really nice uh, images. And, uh, and a lot of this is that we do is, you know, for me anyways, it's it's not that technically uh, hard to do as far as the uh, you know, taking a picture. I mean, to me, it's pretty simple once you learn your simple techniques of a camera. Um, it's really more about finding good subject matter, composing it well, um, and then, of course, you know, having good exposure on the shot. But uh, it's it's not that difficult to actually take in the pictures. It's more about uh, spending the time and learning, you know, what, what works as far as good subjects and what doesn't work. So, so that would be my five tips. Hopefully that would uh, help you out uh, for finding subject matter and, and submitting your images. That was wonderful, Mike. I always enjoy seeing your images. You have such a creative eye. And I think, you know, you. one of your tips about um, getting out there and practicing and using some of those post-processing programs also kind of gives you that unique look. So. Yep, that's the digital age. <laughs> it is, isn't it? And that's where we are. <laughs> yeah. So um, for those of you who are submitting into this contest, uh, Mike, just to kind of uh, give us an overview again, looks like you're looking for uniqueness, not just flowers, but things that are unique and artistic. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, it's called Tiny Landscapes, the contest, and, and we're looking for um, all those unique subjects, like I said, that uh, are a little different and uh, unique. Um, um, not necessarily looking for flowers or bugs in this one. Uh, I think uh, we did a bug contest not long ago, but uh, uh, this is something that uh, we want to want to see the creativity of the people out there. Um, and I've done this before in the past, um, doing a contest on my own where we uh, we didn't allow any flowers or bugs, and we got a tremendous amount of really good images that came in. And I think once people really get out of that comfort zone of shooting 
the flowers and the bugs and go out there and start studying all the cool things that expands their horizons and uh, I think they'll get excited when they start finding all the neat things that are out there to shoot. I'm really looking so, forward to seeing all the, the entries <laughs> and which one you pick yeah. is the grand winner. So. Yeah, and and I know there'll be a there'll be some really good ones. Uh, I know from like I say my past contests that I did where I where we didn't have flowers and bugs uh, for that contest. Uh, it was I was extremely happy with what was being submitted. There was some really good images, and so I know people can do it. Um, uh, so uh, I, I'm pretty confident that we're going to get some really strong images and and uh, and uh, get a really good winner. Great. Well, looking forward to it. And Mike, thank you so much once again for sharing your wonderful work and your insight into the world of macro photography. Well, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Lori. I appreciate you having me on. <laughs> thank you. All right. Bye, everyone.